Hello, thank you for listening to this talk about topology hiding communication from minimal assumptions. This is joint work with these lovely people, Marshall Ball, Elad Boyle, Ran Cohen, Lisa Cole, and the Tals Malkin, and Moran. Now, we cryptographers are naturally distrusting people. If we run some joint computation, we'll want to keep our inputs private, if at all possible. And we can do this by running a secure multi-party computation protocol, or MPC. This is possible in this case because everyone is both willing and able, thankfully, to communicate with everyone else. As you can see, the, uh, the communication graph, where each edge represents a secure point-to-point -point channel, is a complete one. However, in most real-world peer-to-peer uh, -peer networks, it won't be the case. It will actually be an incomplete network. To make matters worse, the structure of the network will often reveal sensitive information the parties would rather keep private. For instance, if I get to know who's talking to who, I may learn such things as geographic proximity between participants, uh, friendship relations, absence of friendship, or, or I could learn about some back-channeling I wasn't supposed to know about. So in this case, the parties will want to run, instead, a topology-hiding computation protocol or THC. I'll define it in a minute, but it essentially means that at the start, each player only gets to know his local view of the network, and the computation running it should not uh, leak any information about the structure of the graph at all. So what do I mean by a local view? Considering this example from the point of view of part number four, here in red, well, 4 only gets to see who his direct neighbors in the graph are, not who else may be participating in the computation, nor how the other players may or may not be uh, communicating. Now that we have this, we can define roughly what topology hiding computation is. Parties know their local view, but that's it. They should not learn anything else when running the topology hiding computation protocol. Now, what makes this notion harder to achieve than normal MPC? Well, we have a restricted communication model, restricted information available to the players about the network, and an extra privacy requirement that the topology should not be. All of this makes it harder. So much harder, in fact, that if you look at the history of THC, the entirety of the first era, so for, from the antiquity to the Middle Ages, if you will, was all about trying to achieve THC against semi-honest adversaries. Now, the approach they used of incrementally starting with studying, of achieving THC for small graphs, extending to large but very structured graphs, such as paths and cycles, to finally achieve the volatile computation on all graphs, is insightful, and it's an approach which was kept in later works uh, this idea that if you want to understand topology hiding computation, it's always a good idea to start with um, simpler graph classes to develop an intuition about what's going on for more complex ones. And even that simple graph classes are interesting on their own. So in the second phase, uh, the, rena the Renaissance, if you want, uh, the question was to try and go even beyond semi-honest adversaries and tolerate even stronger corruption models. And skipping ahead, a recent work tackles the problem of uh, dealing with asynchronous networks. And if I summarize one way of summarizing all these works, uh, red, blue, and green, is to say that they all roughly try to establish protocols for topology hiding computation in the hardest possible conditions, the hardest possible settings, adversarial settings. And they did so using strong tools such as uh, public cryptography or secure hardware. Uh, in contrast, there was a trend uh, we'll call modern THC which emerged and which was all about revisiting simpler settings. Indeed, works predating the term topology hiding computation itself suggested that it would be impossible to achieve the notion information theoretically if you wanted to do it on all graphs. But that left a bit of leeway of considering simple simple graph classes and, and uh, very few corruptions. And there was a push to investigate this last year. And, to and they raised the question, 
of trying to understand when is topology hiding information theoretic topology hiding computation possible. This work, in many ways, um, laid the foundation for our own. So what we're doing, in a sense, postmodern THC, is all about trying to deconstruct it and understand the core difficulty of it by stripping it down to the very minimalistic setting. We'll consider only the simplest of functionalities of uh, the broadcast type and only the simplest kind of adversaries. A, a single semi-honest corruption, which honestly is, is almost, uh, it's almost not adversarial at all. And in this minimal setting, we would like to understand what are the minimal tools that are required to hide the topology. So uh, I'll be using the abbreviation 1THB and 1THAB to the sequel to denote topology hiding broadcast and non broadcast against one semi-honest corruption. The, the setting is so minimal that in fact it would be essentially trivial if we didn't care about hiding the topology. But concretely the problem we'd like to we propose to solve is the following. You give me a graph class and I'll tell you what kind of assumption, what kind of tools you'll need in order to do topology hiding broadcast and non broadcast against one corruption. Now perhaps surprisingly, you, you might think that uh, since there are so many graph classes, it might be that there are a whole there's a whole zoo of assumptions. As it turns out, there's a very there are only three of them that we've found. So what kind of uh, results do we get? I'll start by presenting um, a simplified version, where instead of uh, showing you our results for all graph classes, I'll focus on the maximal classes. So for instance, uh, all two connected graphs, all graphs, that sort of thing. And already for topology hiding broadcast, we have this nice um, dichotomy between what is possible information theoretically and what is equivalent to Q-equivalent. What's nice is that this there's a, there's a nice correspondence between the purely cryptographic notion of what kind of tools you need and the purely graph theoretic property of two connectivity. And if you look at what happens for anonymous broadcast, it's essentially the same thing, except you now have a second dichotomy, this time between key agreement and oblivious transfer. So the separation in this case is about having a guaranteed on majority or not, uh, having the path of length 2 uh, somewhat complicates things and makes it so that you sometimes have to require OT. So for the remainder of this talk, I'll focus on showing you two of our results. The first is uh, Y, introducing this uh, path of length 2 um, implies OT sometimes. And the second result I'd like to show is our main feasibility result. How can you achieve information theoretic topology hiding broadcast on the class of all two connected graphs? Let's now show our first result, the oblivious transfer lower bound. This is our setting. We'd like to show that topology had not hiding anonymous broadcast on this class of paths of length two and three requires OT. And we'll actually st start by showing something simpler, that if you can do such an anonymous broadcast in two rounds only, then you get OT. And we'll show it by taking such a protocol and explicitly constructing a two-party semi-honest AND functionality from it, which in turn implies OT. This is the setting for the two-party AND. Two players, Alice and Bob, hold inputs X and Y, and they'd like to compute the AND of their inputs. In the first step, Alice samples a long random string and sends it to Bob. Then she, she's going to emulate virtual parties depending on her input, either one of them or two of them. And Bob does something similar. They're now going to collect their virtual parties on the line with Alice's, Alice's nodes on the left and Bob's nodes on the right. 
and they're going to run the topology hiding anonymous broadcast protocol on this path having Alice's leftmost party always broadcast the long random string R. Now Bob looks at the result of this two parts of this uh, of this anonymous broadcast. If all of his nodes output the long random string, random string R, he sets his output to to zero. If they don't, he'll set it to one. And Alice learns from Bob what this is. So. Why is this protocol correct? Well, there are four, four cases for what, may, for what may be going on. Four different paths. In the first three cases, you'll note that the graphs, the paths obtained, are perfectly within the graph class. Therefore, by correctness guarantee of the anonymous broadcast protocol, all of the players, in, in particular all of Bob's players, are going to output the long random string R. However, in the last case, I claim that one prime has, cannot possibly output uh, the long random string. Why is that? Well, the, the protocol runs in two rounds, and one prime is three steps away from the broadcaster. So he can't get the message in time. This means that Bob, who is simulating party one prime, gets to, gets to identify this case. And this is the case where x and y are both equal to 1, which is exactly the case where the AND of x and y is equal to 1. This means that Bob, by just looking at whether all of his parties output, one on, uh, output the long random string or not, can determine what the AND of, the, of Alice's and Bob's inputs are, is. Therefore, the scheme I described is correct. Let's now argue why it's secure. Well, recall that the key observation is that in a two-party AND functionality, if a player holds input 1, he knows everything. Why? Because if he holds input 1, then his... Um, then he knows that the other player's input is exactly the output. So the only case in which we have to hide something from a player is if he holds input 0. So for instance, what happens if Alice holds input 0? Well, by design, she's only ever simulated, in that case, she's only simulating one player. So that means that, uh, uh, at, and, that and since the topology hiding anonymous broadcast protocol is secure against one corruption. That means that Alice has no hope in distinguishing between the two paths 2, 3 and 2, 3, 1 prime. But knowing the topology is exactly the same thing as knowing what Y's input is. Sorry, at w as what Bob's input is, that's Y. Therefore, she knows absolutely nothing about Bob's input. And something completely similar is going on for when Bob holds input 0, which means that when one of them, whoever holds input 0, knows nothing about the other player's input, which guarantees security of the scheme I described. So recall, the scheme is, they simulate, they simulate passes according to their input bit, they, run, they put them on the line, they run the topology hiding anonymous broadcast protocol on it, and depending on whether all of Bob's node, nodes output a long random string or not, they output 0 or 1. So I showed that um, if you had a two-round two anonymous broadcast, then you had OT. Can we do better? So where did we use the fact that the protocol ran in two runs? It was so Bob could identifiably uh, know when the case was that X and Y were both one. So the protocol would break when we run it on too long a path. Now what happens if I just run this protocol, do the exact same, the exact same thing, 
But now, using a topology hiding anonymous broadcast protocol, on which you gave me no guarantees on the round complexity. Well, in that case, there are two options. Either the protocol still breaks when I run it on this path 1, 2, 3, 1 prime, or it doesn't. If it breaks, we're good. We can just, as before, it, it, the thing works exactly as before. But if it doesn't break, it means that the protocol you gave me is actually strong, is actually topology hiding against a stronger class than just path of the rank 2 or 3. It's the path of the rank 2 and 3, plus you can add in this new, this new path 1, 2, 3, 1 prime. And what we could show, and we do it in the in the full version of the paper, is that if you take this new class and basically bootstrap the protocol on itself, having Alice and Bob now um, now simulate longer and longer half paths than rather than this uh, half paths of length one or two, then you can try again and see if the protocol breaks, and so on and so on, and bootstrap it again and again until you've constructed half paths so long that the paths will have to be longer than the round complexity uh, can make secure. So what this means is that if you have a constant round protocol for topology hiding broadcast, you'll be able to uh, get a oblivious transfer for, from it. But that's just the vague idea and I refer you to the to the full version of the paper for the for the details. Let's now show our second result that topology hiding anonymous broadcast against one passive corruption is possible information theoretically. So this is our setting, but for simplicity I'll restrict the graph class to only those graphs with exactly n vertices n vertices that all the players. And instead of showing you how to achieve anonymous broadcast, I'll instead show how any two players, here S and T, can emulate a secure channel between them. So this is in fact sufficient in this case to achieve anonymous broadcast, but I won't show it, uh, just trust me. So what are this re the requirements for this functionality? S wants to send a message securely to T, meaning T should get the message. None of the other players should learn it and we still want to hide the topology. And I'll build the protocol in three steps. First, I'll show how to achieve the secure message transmission functionality if the network is public. Then, I'll show how this can still be done if knowledge of the graph is now distributed and the players only each only know their local views. Uh, but in this case, we won't mind if T learns the topology. And finally, in the last step, I'll show how, how this can be tweaked so that no one learns the topology, so that it's in fact topology hiding. So starting with the case when the graph is public, since it's public, we can canonically fix a bipolar orientation from S to T, otherwise known as an ST orientation. So what this does is it fixes an ordering of, uh, from 1 to N, when where s has rank 1 and t the sink has rank t uh, sorry has rank n and the protocol works as follows in the first round s additively secret shares the message for t in two parts and sends them to his descendants so one part for two one part for three in the second round the player with rank 2 in the ordering takes the share she received from S and secret shares it between 3, 4, and 5. Sorry, 3, 4, and 5. In the third round, player with rank 3 adds the share he received from S in the first round and the share he received from 2 in the second round, takes this sum, Additively secret shares it in two parts and splits it and you know sends one one share to four, one share to six. When it's the turn of a neighbor of T, here four, they do the same, but for now they hold on to the share they prepared for T. Okay? 
uh, this isn't strictly necessary now, but will be very useful in later protocols. So after all is said and done, I claim that the message that T intended for S, sorry, that S intended for T, is additively secret shared in the neighborhood of T, here between 4, 5, and 6, or rather the, the parties with ranks 4, 5, and 6 in the origin. So these parties can just send their shares T, and T can reconstruct the message. The scheme terminates and is correct because uh, the orientation of the graph is acyclic and by properties of additive secret sharing and resharing of shares. And I claim that the intermediate parties, ranked 2 to 6, don't learn the bit because the graph is too connected. That means that a single, uh, that a single corruption cannot intercept all the shares as there will always be a route from S to T which avoids this corruption and which passes part of the part of the message from S to T. But this was the case where you had a single graph and the topology was known. Now what to do when the topology is not known? Parties now only know their local views and T, and T is the only one who is allowed to learn the topology for now. So we'll fix an orientation for each graph in the class. So here HI is the orientation we assign to GI. Still ST orientations from S to T, all of them. And from the point of view of parties, so a single party, here's a, the red node, uh, might have very different ancestors, the XI's, possibly of primes, uh, ranks. So here, three, four, three, five, and seven, and very different descendants. He has a wise, um, in different orientations corresponding to different networks. And the protocol works by running in parallel modified iterations of the primitive I detailed before for a single graph, um, and running in parallel one per possible topology. And we'll show how to combine them just in a minute. So the modified protocol is as follows. The one corresponding to topology GI will be, you do as exactly as before, except now, when it's the, uh, um, the red party's turn, there are two options. Either what he sees of the network corresponds to his neighborhood in GI, in which case he does exactly the same thing. He takes the, sh the he he sums the messages he receives from the X's and secret shares it into uh, and secret shares it and splits it for the for the Y's. Or the neighborhoods don't match, in which case he he completely the red node completely disregards whatever the X's try to send him and sends random noise to those of the Y's to which he's actually connected. Because recall that since the neighborhoods are different, it might be that five is not, that the red is not even connected to party Y1, in which case he doesn't send anything. But for those of, to which he is connected, he just sends random noise. Now, I claim that what this does is that once you reach the stage where all of these um, protocols reach the step where the message is secret shared in the neighborhood of T, is that the neighbors now hold vectors of shares, and that the shares corresponding to the real topology, so here M2, M2 prime, and M2 second, will still sum up to the real to the to the real message. Why is that? It's because since uh, basically every party had uh, recognized their local view and the topology, therefore they just ran the same protocol as before. But in all other cases, at least one party uh, noticed that the neighborhood in the real graph in the in the network was different than that in the in, in GI, GI. And by doing the modification we presented, 
like completely ignoring the shells you received and replacing them with random noise, they completely uh, mucked up the computation for everyone else. Now it's a random message. Okay, but we're not quite done. Because what, what would happen if the neighbors, x1, x2, x3, just send these vectors to t for reconstruction? t would sum up term by term and obtain the real bit, that's true, but lost in a vector of random noise and wouldn't be able to know which, uh, which was the correct message. This is an easy fix. Simply make the messages long vectors and um, make sure that you pad the message, the real message with a lot of zeros. That makes it distinguishable from a random, from a random message, a random vector. And in this case, T learns the topology uh, because, of course, uh, once he reconstructed uh, the message, so he recognized the one like starting with a lot of zeros. He realized it was m2 plus m2 prime plus m2 second, which means he knows the real graph is g2. So how do we prevent t from learning this uh, real topology? Simply, just before sending uh, these um, vectors to t, the neighbors will permute them independently and randomly. What this does is that if t wants, now wants to reconstruct the message, he'll have to try all possible combination of summing one share from x1, one share from x2, plus one share from x3. So with good probability, with good probability, a uh, bit lower, he'll still find only one combination which sums up to a message starting with a lot of zeros. But now, he won't be able to tell what the real graph is from because the shares have been permuted. Therefore, this protocol is now completely topology hiding because before the other players didn't learn the topology because they were just passing on chance and now even T doesn't know it. So this concludes uh, our claim that topology uh, that um, topology hiding in this broadcast is possible against one corruption on the class of all two connected graphs. Today, we saw two of our main results one no bound and one protocol. But going back to the big picture very quickly, I said we had clean results for maximal graph classes, which are form all graph subset. However, we also know the minimal assumption for a great many more classes. All of them, in fact, except for this grey area, for which we only know that key agreement is necessary and that OT is sufficient, leaving open the interesting question of completely characterizing the minimal requirements for THC. And with that, thank you again for listening, and goodbye.